So I was asked to make a sheath for a knife that somebody bought at a gun and knife show. And it comes in a sheath that is a perfect example of how not to make a knife sheath. I see this quite often that there's somebody that they're making custom knives and then they just throw it in whatever sheet they can find either at a yard sale or they buy some maiden overseas bulk sheaths or something. But this one, it has sharp corners on rough edges. It appears to be made from some sort of finished split instead of a quality leather. The spacer is some type of foam, rubber, I don't know. The part where it loops down to make the belt loop is only held by one or two stitches in here. That seems like a recipe for disaster. And probably the worst of all is while it has this retention strap, it doesn't do any good because it's not put someplace where it's actually going to retain the knife because it just falls right out of the sheath, which of course doesn't fit very well anyway because it's really loose. So yeah, I've seen this before. Uh, in this case, I'm supposed to make a sheath for this that's going to be a horizontal carried on the back of the belt sheath and the same guy wants me to make it fit, if I can, this knife and a buck 119 that he has, which Buck does a better job on their knife sheets. There's a couple things I don't like about them, but at least they're solid and made out of good leather. Um, but these two knives have some similarities, so this might be possible. The Buck has a little bit longer blade. This one has a little bit wider blade. Both of them have guards, so I should be able to get something to work. So, eh. Start with a pattern. I'm basically indexing off this corner right here. So I want this guard to be in the same place and I want that to be in basically the same place. And then trace off of that. And we're going to keep the outside lines. So as I said, this isn't going to be a perfect fit for this knife, which does kind of bother me a little bit now that I think about it. Um, but it should fit both of them as the customer requested. But again, we also do want our balance point to be where the straps are for the belt as well. So those are going to have to be further back on the knife. Um, you'll see a lot of times these type of sheets, they've just got it wrapped around the blade up here. And if it's a really blade heavy knife, that works. But otherwise, it just wants to shift and move around a lot unless you've got that balance point right about where those uh, belt loops are. All right, with the camera turned off, I spent a little bit more time getting this all sorted out. And... Biggest problem with this pattern that I've got is that the belt loop needs to be right in here to support the knife from the belt, but also the retaining loop needs to be right there as well, and they're kind of contradicting each other a little bit. And I decided on something, basically I'm going to add on a piece that becomes my belt loop. It's going to attach onto the back of the sheath and have a piece that comes up that folds down and gets sewn shut later. Um, and then that'll mean that this sheath is actually a separate piece that comes off the front of it, which will give us that little bump that we need uh, for the guard to fit in against without a uh, big lump and having to shape it around the back as much. You'll still have to shape some. Uh, in that case, I'm probably going to do the retaining strap just as a separate piece, uh, just a strap that'll go through a couple slots in here and rivet in place. Um, so that means I'm going to do this basically in three pieces, the holster pocket, the belt loop, and the uh, retaining strap are all going to be separate. Anyway, time to cut some leather. 
Okay, now is when I need to start paying attention to whether something is right or left-handed. Doesn't much matter on this piece because it's kind of reversible. But this one I gotta pay attention to. I make sure I have it set up the way I want it to. So that when I stitch it all together, um, it's gonna be turned the right way. And I don't have to do it again. So, this piece is gonna be the harder one to lay out. This piece will go pretty easily right here. There's a good chunk of leather over here for this one. Let me go ahead and just pack that piece off there. Get all this out of my way. That'll make life a little easier. And I'm just gonna basically use this um, French edge diver. To put a groove in that leather there. Kind of fold it back on itself. There's a couple different things you can wrap it around a mallet handle. Just to give it a round surface. You can also use round gouges V gouges, various things to make folds like this. But I like to take out a wider section. And I find this works really well. Take a nice wide groove for where I'm going to put a fold in something like this. And get a tighter fold that way. Okay, now let's use our little scrap piece that I held on to here and get a um, spacer out of it if we can. Close enough. I always like to take the corners off the very end of the spacer down there, if I don't skive it entirely. Um, just to make a spot that's a little bit neater finish, fits in a little tighter as that leather wraps around. But I do some stitching across here. I don't want that lump where I stitch across it. I want it to transition down smooth, so I'm going to skive right there and take that off. So I don't want to have that bump there for my machine to jump off of and skip a stitch or something. It's also useful if you're hand stitching to have neater transitions too. I'm just beveling the opening of the sheet at the top. The rest of it, like I said, since it gets folded together, you don't want it beveled because you don't want a, a gap there. You want that to 
meld in nice and neat when you sand it later. This piece, I don't necessarily need to bevel this side of it up to a certain point, but I will need to bevel around up here and down here. I forgot to turn the camera on it, but as you can see, I put a base coat of red dye on there. Because I'm thinking about block dyeing this with some black over that red. So it's got the bright colors in the handle. And it'll go well enough with the uh, buck knife that he also wants to use the sheath farm. Get some of the excess off. All right. Yeah, I want a good and dark around the edge, so I'm going to go around with a dauber. come back with some finish. Okay, now I'll go finish up some edges. I won't be able to get to later. I did do some dye and finish on the inside as well, so you won't be able to see um, unfinished leather. And same on the, the belt loop part, because you're going to be able to see some of that. What steps do I need to do first? I guess first will be stitching this part on that's going to become the flap. Then I can come back up and glue in the spacer and close that up. Then stitch that, fold this down and stitch this. Okay, I totally forgot to record it while I was down there, but um, I stitched that on there, kind of following the outside edge of the leather here, avoiding crossing the fold so that it will still fold, uh, and then going just inside where I'm going to be with my stitch line along the outside edge. At least, hopefully that should be just inside of it. It's going to be close, but there should be like a line of double stitching right across there. 
Now then, next up, let's go ahead and glue this piece in. Get it stuck in place. And glue the sheet shut so that I can go ahead and stitch that. And I'll probably just say all at once, stitch that. And then go down and stitch this piece as well. Now, before we go down and stitch anything in our way, go ahead and punch our holes for our straps. You can mark this someplace particular. I'm just kind of using the thickness of the guard out from the edge. I'm probably going to go a little high on it because it doesn't much matter where it goes through. Except that I want room for the stitching down here where the belt loop's going to be. You just kind of have to consider these things as you're going. Punch a hole right between them for the rivet. I think I'll deal with fighting getting a rivet between there rather than fighting with this being in my way while I'm trying to stitch and having to hold it out of the way while I'm dealing with everything. So let's go ahead and get this all stitched up. Now, some of you may ask yourself why I'm stitching this with white thread when black thread exists, and I even have some sitting around. Um, but in this case, I like the contrast, and it kind of adds that sort of border to it. And this particular customer also likes that look with the white thread on black leather. So it's a case of knowing my customer as much as anything else. Plus, I mean, there's a little bit of laziness involved in it, in that I don't have to change threads. So I already had white thread on the machine. Okay, so I have a scrap of half inch leather that's going to be my tie down strap for this whole thing. And I'm just going to kind of put a strap point on the end of it. Now let's get back to finishing up these edges. As you can see, it needs some of it got ground off, some of it wasn't colored to start with. But since we're going with black as our contrast color, it's pretty easy to just go along and put some black dye on there. You know something I did forget? Forgot to bevel these edges off. After I ground them off, they're squared. Get that little bit of leather that showed through the beveling there. All right, now a little bit of gum drag and some burnishing to finish these edges up. Sorry. 
I actually just put gum drag on this little strap too to just sort of finish it up a little bit, smooth it out, burnish the surface of it a touch. Uh, gives it a more polished wax sort of feel to it. Alright, I tried both these knives in here and their handles are almost exactly the same to wrap around. So, which I knew from measurements was true, but it always helps to confirm it. But anyway, that puts me right about where I need to be. Let's go ahead and set a rivet and some snaps. We should be done with this project. First. I'm going to slide this leather strap in here. This is a really thick piece of leather that I use to shape uh, belt loops for belts. I tapered it on one end and I made it thicker than I normally would make a belt. So I can slide that in there and make sure a belt loop is going to fit an inch and a half belt. But it also works well as an anvil for punching holes. in a situation like this. And when I tear it up, I just go get another scrap piece of leather and cut a couple inch and a half strips out of it and make another one. Uh, toss our rivet in there. A little metal piece in there to be an anvil underneath. set some snaps make sure when you're setting snaps that you get them turned around the right way uh, it sounds like such an obvious thing to point out but it is a very common mistake when you're setting snaps like this to just go ahead and oh goes like that and then pretty soon you got one backwards um, especially since you're nearing that very end of the project when you want to see it done that's when you tend to make mistakes, or at least when I tend to make mistakes. Okay, make sure you get turned around the right way where it needs to be. Alright, then we got a sheet that will actually hold the knife. It will hold the knife level. No way to show this on the angle I've got the camera at. I'll try and show it when I take the final pictures. But it's at the balance point. So the knife just hangs level. It doesn't want to pitch down or up or any way around. And it also holds this other knife. It doesn't pull out of the sheath. It's balance point is a little further out, but it's still underneath this, so it'll still hold nice and level without tilting one way or the other.